Hi, this is Sylvie and thank you for joining me. Kids are not always around when you want to practice your face painting designs or they are not willing to sit for hours. So the obvious choice is to paint on your own skin. You've seen me doing it in previous videos. I often paint on my inner arm. If I need a larger area, I paint on my legs. But um, the disadvantage is that the space is limited and it doesn't have the shape of a real person's face. So you don't get a feel for the realistic dimensions. But thankfully there are some good practice tools available and this is what I'm going to show you now. You might have seen them or at least one of them in my previous videos. I actually have two practice heads. Um, they look kind of creepy, sorry about that. I did get them a long, long time ago and I did use them a lot at the beginning. Not so much anymore, except uh, in some of my YouTube videos now. The one on the right um, was half of the price, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll get it. Um, but it was a mistake and I realized this right away when I got it. The plastic feels and looks very cheap. Uh, it's very shiny and smooth and I could never get any good results with it. So I was really disappointed. The one on the left is made out of plastic, of course, as well, but um, it feels a lot more like real skin to the touch. It has a little bit of a texture, which seems to make it easier for the face paint to hold on it. Um, so my recommendation would be, if you're interested in getting one of those, is to go for something of quality. And I will put in the description bar below a list of shops where you can find something similar. So let's go through the pros and cons. The first really good thing is that you will work with a three-dimensional face, um, which looks very similar to a real face painting situation with all the limitation that it implies. For example, when you're holding the sponge, you might realize that the nose gets in the way or maybe it's the eye socket or the cheekbone. Whatever it may be, these are things that need some getting used to at the beginning. These are also good if you are thinking about face painting at an event where you will need to be very fast and you can practice your speed. So just pick a simple design at the beginning, set your timer and go for it. Um, and remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because it will be much easier on real skin. But this is a good way to see if you can paint it within the time frame or not and practice some more if necessary. And the final bonus is that you'll be able to see your finished design in 3D, which is always a good thing. Now onto the things that I don't love so much about practice heads and the first one being that the plastic is usually too smooth, meaning that the face paint doesn't grab on it. Um, as you can see here, I'm practicing my teardrops on my hands and everything's going well, but when I'm trying to do the same thing on the practice head, somehow I realize that the ends of my teardrops are not sharp and precise, and this can be very frustrating. Another frustrating thing is that you'll need to avoid dark colors, especially the dark blues, dark red, and dark greens, because these stain really bad and are hard to wash off. It's hard to avoid using black completely, but I usually apply it over another base color. The colors that you'll be able to uh, use safely are all the light colors, especially the metallic or pearl colors, and the white, of course. A little tip that might help is to get from the drugstore a very cheap cream foundation and to coat the practice head with it first. You will find that it creates a protection barrier between the face paint and the practice head and it makes it easier to wash off afterwards. I also find that the application of the colors with the sponge can be uh, quite challenging. As you can see here, some colors look very streaky at first, so I have to go back and apply several layers before I'm happy with the coverage. I also find that it's sometimes difficult to blend the colors together. Obviously, it's plastic, so it doesn't act like skin would, and it takes, again, several layers before I'm happy with the results and this can really be annoying sometimes because you realize that it takes a lot longer on the practice head to finish a full face as it would on a normal person. And as I mentioned earlier, they can be really difficult to wash off. I recommend first trying with a kitchen spray or a dishwasher soap. If that doesn't work, you can use alcohol, you can use nail polish remover, 
Uh, I heard the toothpaste works as well or a magic eraser sponge but sometimes it does take a lot of effort to get the stains out. And if you want quality you will realize that this practice head can be quite pricey especially compared to the other practice tool that I'm going to show you now. I received so many questions about the practice boards that you've seen me use in my previous videos especially how did I make it and this is what I'm first going to show you and then I will tell you about other practice boards that I'm using now instead and that I think are even better. So these are my old boards. I've been asked, can you please send me those pictures? And the answer is no, unfortunately I cannot because I've got these a long time ago and I don't have the file anymore. But I have two tips for you. The first one is to go on Google Images and to type in Natalie Portman Bold. You will find there are tons of really great pictures that you can then print. The other option is quite simply to take a picture of your child or a brother or sister or relative and then print that picture in large format in black and white or color making sure that the width of the face at eye level is about 16 centimeters or I think 6.3 inches. You will then just need to laminate this picture. If you have a laminating machine, great. If not, you can just look around where you live for an office supply shop and ask them if they offer this type of services. It really costs very little to have this done. Let me tell you now about my new practice board that I absolutely love and before I go on I just want to point out that I bought this board myself with my money. I am not sponsored by this company or any other company. I don't sell supplies so that you can be sure that my opinions are always 100% honest and based on products that I have used and that I think are really good. What makes this board so much better than the one I made at home is truly the plastic material that it's made of. One side of it bears the indication paint this side because it is more raw. It has some kind of a structure and when you paint on it, it grabs the paint and holds it in a way I can't explain it, how it works, but it's almost like painting on real skin. It's really amazing. What's also really cool about these boards is that they exist in different sizes, different face shapes and body parts depending on what you're looking for. And I will put more info in the description box below so that you can find them online in case you're interested. I also encourage you to look for the original boards from Sally Ann Lynch because there are lots of cheaper copies out there but hers are really the best practice boards on the market right now. So what are the pros and cons of a practice board? First of all, they are very inexpensive. The one you make at home obviously will um, cost you nearly nothing. And the one you can buy online is absolutely worth the small price that it costs because it will last you forever. The other advantages are that there are no limitations of colors. You can use your dark colors, you can use your black even directly on the board. This is also a great tool to practice full face designs or cheek designs. You can also use this um, to time yourself to see if you can paint a specific design within a time frame, as I explained earlier with the practice head. So there are really no limitations on what you can do with these boards. If you want to, you can also use these boards as display to show the kids what they can choose from. Sally and Lynch created a bigger board with only the eye area specifically for this purpose. The other huge plus is that they are super easy to wash. Um, if you have any stubborn stains, you can use the cleaning products that I mentioned earlier, but usually just water and soap is completely sufficient to get it as clean as new. The one obvious disadvantage is that it is a flat surface, so you won't be able to see your design in 3D. My DIY board is made of a very shiny and slippery plastic, so this can make it difficult to apply the paint on it. Um, however, the professional boards um, are made of the special material that I mentioned earlier, so it kind of solves the problem actually. I also find it sometimes difficult on my self-made board to blend colors together. As you can see here, I applied the blue color first and now that I'm trying to apply the purple and blend it with the blue, um, I realized that first of all, it's not really blending very well and second, I am kind of erasing the blue underneath. So I end up having to go back with the blue and then go back again with the purple. It's kind of fastidious. But now that I have my new tried and tested boards, I no longer have this problem. As you can see here, I apply the first color and right away I get a good and even coverage. And when I apply the second color, the blend is nice and soft. I don't have to go back and forth. So this saves me a lot of time and frustration. So I hope that this video was useful to you. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate if you would give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on YouTube. Have a great day. Bye.